and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India and the Maldives share a crucial partnership for stability in the Indian Ocean region. Facing common challenges, their cooperation is key. India's financial and developmental support strengthens the Maldives' capacity to respond. Recent agreements during the Maldivian president's visit highlight a shared focus on maritime cooperation and infrastructure development. India and the Maldives enjoy deep-rooted ties, blending culture, religion, and commerce. As one of the first to recognize the Maldives post-independence in 1965, India has been a long-standing partner. In his recent state visit, Maldivian President Mohammad Muizu and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaffirmed the importance of their growing partnership for regional stability, celebrating the progress that continues to strengthen bonds and benefit both nations. Prime Minister Modi and I held extensive discussions taking stock of our successful development journey together and charting a path for the future collaboration between our two countries. We agreed on a comprehensive vision document charting the course of our bilateral relationship. During President Moise's visit, India announced financial support for the Maldives, including 30 billion Indian rupees and 400 million USD through a currency swap agreement to help address the country's challenges. The leaders also agreed to begin free trade agreement negotiations and sign five key agreements on currency swap, judicial training, anti-corruption, and law enforcement. Of other notable progress between the two nations, the Rupay card was launched in the Maldives, India transferred 700 social housing units, and a new runway was inaugurated at Hani Madhu International Airport. As natural allies in the Indian Ocean region, both countries are committed to enhancing maritime and security cooperation. Prime Minister Modi reaffirmed India's support for the Maldives under its Neighbourhood First policy and Vision Sagar, emphasizing shared growth and regional stability. We are Maldives National Defence Forces training and capacity building. We will continue to do Indian Ocean region, स्थिरता और समृद्धि के लिए हम मिलकर काम करेंगे। India has played a vital role in supporting the Maldives, reflecting their strong historical and geographical ties. Over the years, India has provided economic aid, disaster relief, and funded key infrastructure projects like roads, hospitals, and housing. In order to deal with the structural issues in the finance and the banking sector and others, it is very important that uh, some kind of a uh, financial injection is made into the economy and that's precisely what India has done by providing a bridging facility of 30 billion rupees and then giving some over 380 billion or something like that uh, as uh, assistance or grant or loans uh, for carrying out projects. And so they have agreed on many projects in the process also that will continue. But for all that, it is important that your financial health is good. And India has tried to provide all the assistance that has been requested uh, by the Maldivian president. India and the Maldives remain committed to mutual growth and development, working together in finance, infrastructure and security. Their partnership is crucial for the stability of the Indian Ocean region. With a focus on shared prosperity and resilience, both nations are well positioned to tackle future challenges together. Let's now take you to Ladakh, often called the crown jewel of India for its stunning landscapes of mountains, open skies, winding rivers and lush valleys. Its rich culture, traditions and values enhance its natural beauty. The capital lake is not only breathtaking but also a key centre of Buddhism in India, where the region's natural splendour and Buddhist philosophy have coexisted harmoniously for centuries. Leh, perched at nearly 11,000 feet, 
is a vibrant blend of cultures where religious harmony thrives. Though diverse, it remains a stronghold of Buddhism with Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions and the four sects, Nyingma, Kagyu, Sakya, and Gelu, deeply rooted. Chanting fills the air during prayers and rituals, keeping the ancient Buddhist spirit alive in Ladakh for millennia. बहुत धर्म सबसे पहले तो यहाँ अशोका के जमाने में उसका जो स्तूपा था एक स्तूपा यहाँ है यहाँ क्या कहते हैं तीरी में एक स्तूपा संस्कार में है तो तब से जो गंदार आर्ट वाले आए कश्मीर से आए तो उन्होंने बुद्धा का स्टीचू बनाना शुरू किया पहाड़ों पे पत्थर पे और तब हमारे यहाँ से लोसा और इंजन जंगपो जी आए उन्होंने न्यारमा का जो गोनपा है वो ब्यूट किया ये उन दसवीं दसवीं सदी के बीच में है लोसा और इंजन जंगपो आ गया तब से जब जब से लोसा और इंजन जंगपो आए तब से बुद्धिज्म का यहाँ फैलना शुरू हो गया Ladakh's Tibetan influence Buddhism, with Leh at its cultural heart, attracts visitors seeking spiritual depth. Here, Buddha, revered as a deity who attained nirvana, and various bodhisattvas are venerated in ancient monasteries. Ladakh's rich heritage draws tourists eager to explore and gain insights from its profound Buddhist traditions. Actually, we come to Ladakh uh, uh, to visit the uh, holy places of Buddhism tradition and uh, to learn about uh, your place and also to pray for the peace. Actually, all these ladies from Russia, from different cities of Russia, come here and we pray for the peace uh, on the uh, uh, mountain, on, on the lake, in every place. Uh, because, and here we also, because uh, we uh, share the same uh, Actually, we are motivated by the peace in all the world. Now you know that in Russia and Ukraine there is a war, but uh, a lot of people in Russia, they pray for the peace. On the outskirts of Leh, a family's deep Buddhist faith has endured for generations. Despite harsh winters, with temperatures dipping to minus 20, their daily prayers and rituals continue. The elderly women, ever vibrant in their 70s, remain lively, embracing their faith, culture, traditional dance, and song with unwavering passion. In Ladakh, Buddhism is woven into education. At Mahabodhi Residential School, from nursery to plus two, each day begins with prayers to Buddha blending academic learning with Dhamma teachings to nurture compassionate, responsible citizens. Dhamma is very important because Dhamma includes all the ethical values, all the principles of Lord Buddha, and without it, a modern education is meaningless. So therefore, I think that Dhamma is very much important in everyday, in everyday lives of everyone. In religious classes, children learn about the equality of all faiths, with Dhamma education aimed at fostering respect for others. Each class begins with meditation, yoga, and mindfulness practices. Students explore Buddha's life, his struggles, the pursuit of truth, and the core teachings of Buddhism. For those interested in pursuing religious studies as a career, numerous opportunities are available. Buddhism is a way of life. It's teach about like uh, students how to grow morally and you know like with disciplines and all. So with that uh, we try to infuse the understand the teachings of the Buddha to the students. With that we have uh, like uh, different sections. We have like includes with the yoga, meditations, which help to concentrate on the breathing in and out, which help to uh, concentration, which helps in studies as well. So it's a, and also uh, in Buddhism, we have a Buddhist teachings, not only that, we have teach on moralities and you know, overall uh, growth of the students. Tibetan Buddhist mythology features spirits, deities, and demons, symbolizing good and evil, depicted in temple art. 
Their stories come alive during annual festivals in Ledox Gompas, especially through vibrant mass dances. In a heartwarming display of peace and harmony, Kashmiri Pandits and Muslims came together to commemorate Vijaya Dashmi, a Hindu festival symbolizing the victory of good over evil. The two communities united in offering prayers to the Hindu goddess and crafting effigies of mythological figures, Ravan, Kumkaran and Meghna as part of the tradition. This celebration highlighted the strengthening bond between Hindus and Muslims, fostering peace and harmony in the region. The Shara or Vijaya Dashmi, one of the revered festivals in Hindu religion, is celebrated with great reverence and devotion across India and beyond. The festival observed on the 10th day of the month of Ashwin marks the triumph of good over evil. In this spirit, Kashmiri Pandits throng the Bhadrakali temple after a long time in Kupwara district of India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. This instance also marked the fresh start of a chapter in the history of Kashmir as communities come together to celebrate the festival. As part of the celebrations, a special puja was also organized with rituals focused on invoking blessings for the Kashmir Valley's harmonious future. The occasion drew devotees from women, children to youngsters and elderly from every nook and corner of the region to offer prayers and to serve offerings to one another in solidarity. हम पहले दिन होटल में रुके वहां पे भी सबने बहुत हेल्प की इवन हम यहां आके आर्मी वाले यहां पर हैं उन्होंने बहुत सुख सुविधा और बहुत अच्छे से ट्रीट किया हमें और इन शॉर्ट ये है कि यहां पे जितने भी लोग हैं बहुत हेल्पफुल कम्युनिटी है और हम उनका थैंक्स करते हैं The event held deep cultural and spiritual significance as more than a religious occasion it was a time for the Kashmiri Pandits to reflect on their collective longing for peace, prosperity and a safe return to their homeland. As the nine-day-long festival prevailed, the occasion cultivated an unbreakable bond between the communities as they came together to celebrate the festivity in love and harmony. Today, we are here to come here. We are very proud of it. We are here to come here. बहुत आनंद है आ, कश्मीर मंडला जो है ये आदिकाल से ऋषि मुनियों की तपोभूमि रही है और कुछ विघ्नों के कारण बीच में पूजा अर्चना यहाँ बंद हो गई थी आ, माता की कृपा है फिर से आ, आज फिर भवी तरह से यहाँ पूजा अर्चना हो रही है और जितने भी सनातनी जितने भी हम विश्व से देख रहे हैं उनसे आह्वान है आइए कश्मीर मंडला में जो देवभूमि है जो पग पग पे यहाँ एक तीर्थ है उसके दर्शन और अपने आप को कृतार्थ करके इस जीवन का जो मनुष्य जीवन मानव जीवन मिला है उसको लाभान्वित करें Festival of Vijaya Dashmi, often observed at the end of Durga Puja and Navratri, thereafter proceeds with the culture of burning effigies of Hindu mythological characters Ravan alongside Kumbhakaran and Meghnath. It is believed that Lord Ram killed evil Ravan on the tenth day of the Shara, following which the tradition of burning effigies continues even today in every parts of the country. The occasion, in a heartfelt display of harmony, also witnessed artisans from both the Hindu and Muslim community joining hands together to craft the towering effigies of Ravan and his companions. These stunning creations are not only a testament to the skill of local craftsmen, but also a symbol of community's collective hope for the triumph of good over evil. मेरे को कम से कम दस बारह साल हो गए इनके साथ यहाँ तो ये दस बारह साल से चल रहा है ये दशहरा इनका ये चाहे मुसलमान को कोई दिन हो या इनका दिन हो ये तो मिलजुल कर करना पड़ता है यहाँ तो कल भी यहाँ बहुत मुस्लिम आएंगे देखने के लिए और बाहर से भी पंडित जी आते हैं देखने के लिए फेस्टिवल्स लाइक दीज 
not just bring communities as a society together under one roof but also sends a message to society to follow the path to truth and righteousness. Now let's delve into World in Focus featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Nepali teen Neema Rinji Sherpa, 18, returned to Kathmandu on October 14 to a hero's welcome after setting a record as the youngest person to summit the world's 14 highest peaks. The city's streets were alive with celebrations, including traditional Sherpa music and a Nepali police band parade. On October 9th, Neema reached the summit of Shish Pangma, Tibet's 8,027-meter peak completing the challenge of conquering all 14 peaks, surpassing 8,000 meters renowned for their difficulty. Broke the previous record held by a Sherpa who achieved the same feat at the age of 30. For generations, farming was synonymous with vast rural fields. But a green revolution is blooming in India's cities urban organic farming. City dwellers are turning balconies and rooftops into lush gardens, growing fresh healthy food at home. And this movement isn't just about food. It's about cultivating a sustainable, rewarding lifestyle that reconnects us with nature. Let's explore how urban farming is taking root in major Indian cities. In India's bustling cities, a new trend is growing. Organic home farming, as urban residents turn their rooftops and terraces into lush, green spaces for chemical-free produce. Kushbu Triveni, a resident of Gurugram near New Delhi, has turned her terrace into a thriving garden of chilies, tomatoes, spinach, and okra. Her motivation? To provide her family, especially her child, with safe, nutritious, homegrown food. For her husband, Shantanu, an architect, their garden is more than just fresh produce. It's a way to reconnect with nature and embrace a sustainable, rewarding lifestyle. We are seeing a noticeable shift towards a healthier, farm-to-table lifestyle as more urban dwellers, like the Trivedis, embrace organic home farming. First of all, as my kid, I seriously do not want him to have that uh, pesticide full of uh, vegetables and fruits. So, and then considering I have the terrace spaces, so I think to go with the urban farmer, so key, so that I can have a pesticide free and organic uh, vegetables and fruits. So we have a lot of uh, plants and all, but though those were flowering plants or just, you know, ornamental ones. Here we are, you know, uh, we are eating what we are growing. So that gives you a very profound sense of, uh, you know, that you are connected to nature and your surroundings and, you know, uh, you are eating what you are growing. And that gives you a lot of, uh, you know, joy and, uh, you know, somewhere a satisfaction also. So I think, you know, uh, that has created uh, a very impactful bond, I would say. Uh, with with the nature or, or you know we have an activity where we as a family also you know connect and contribute in noida city the rostogi family shares a similar passion for organic farming kamaljeet rostogi the family patriarch who has long embraced gardening as a hobby notes that homegrown produce not only tastes better but also cooks faster their shift to organic farming has cut their reliance on market-bought vegetables by 50% thanks to the abundant yield from their own terrace garden. Health-wise, when we harvest and make vegetables or uh, uh, sabzi out of these vegetables, uh, my wife tells me that those vegetables cook very fast, right? Unlike vegetables purchased from the market, which take a lot of time to cook, like bangan, Immediately, within 10 minutes, they cook, right? So that's a sign that uh, how delicate and how organically grown they are and they must be healthy. As terrace gardening gains popularity, many people lack the expertise to get started. 
Homegrown companies in India, like the CEF Group, offer solutions for cultivating fresh, organic produce right at home. Through its Urban Farmer Initiative, the company promotes traditional organic farming methods that enrich the soil while reducing reliance on harmful fertilizers. The yeah, traditional ways were natural farming and organic farming. But in the last 70 to 80 years, we've seen that chemical-based fertilizers and chemical-based farming has taken over our original ways of farming. So as of now, under CEF, what we're trying to achieve is to bring back the agriculture glory of the country, to make sure that we are able to enrich the soil as much as possible so that the dependence on chemical fertilizers can be reduced. The rise of urban organic farming reflects a growing desire for a healthier lifestyle and a deeper connection with nature. By utilizing even the smallest spaces, city dwellers can cultivate fresh, organic produce and contribute to a more sustainable future. Let's now turn our attention to Gujarat's rapidly flourishing tourism scene. From the awe-inspiring Statue of Unity to the vibrant festivities of Ran itself, Gujarat is emerging as a global tourist hotspot. With its rich cultural tapestry, breathtaking landscapes and cutting-edge infrastructure, the state is captivating travellers from every corner of the globe. Gujarat in Western India is emerging as a major tourist hub. Known for its rich cultural heritage, vibrant festivals and iconic attractions like the Statue of Unity. The state gained recognition with the launch of the Kushbu Gujarat Key campaign in 2005, aimed at enhancing infrastructure and connecting key tourist spots. This initiative spurred a surge in domestic and international tourism. Festivals like Ran Utsav, Navratri, and the Tarnator Fair further boosted Gujarat's appeal, a momentum that has grown in recent years. Gujarat boasts numerous national parks and wildlife sanctuaries, with Gir National Park serving as the sole habitat for the majestic Asiatic lions. As Chief Minister, Narendra Modi championed conservation efforts by implementing anti-poaching laws and enhancing infrastructure. The Kushbu Gujaraki campaign further elevated Gear's profile, drawing ecotourism and wildlife enthusiasts from around the globe. Today, Gear's rich ecosystem and its thriving population of Asiatic lions make it a premier destination for jungle safaris and nature lovers, offering unforgettable experiences in the heart of nature. <laughs> तो सिंह के लिए जो सुरक्षा है ऐसी सुरक्षा हमने कहीं और नहीं देखी है और ऐसी ऐसी है जो मात्र यहां पे गुजरात में ही देखने को मिलते हैं वो वो हम गर्व करने से ऐसी बात है कि वर्ल्ड में ऐसा वर्ल्ड लाइफ है जो और कहीं भी नहीं दिखाई दिखती है जो हमारे गुजरात में यहां शासनगिर में है हमारे लिए एक गवर्नमेंट ने अच्छी सुविधा कर जो हम कम पैसे में हमारे बजट में हम लोग यहां आराम से आके Enjoy कर सके अंदर शेर वगैरह पैंथर सब कुछ मिले हमें और गाइड भी बहुत अच्छे थे जो हमारे बस के थे उन्होंने अच्छे से समझाया Gujarat has unveiled stunning adventure and ecotourism destinations like Saputara and Gira waterfalls which attract nature lovers with their breathtaking landscapes diverse flora and fauna and opportunities for outdoor activities in addition to its natural beauty, the state's rich cultural heritage, showcased through majestic forts, intricate step wells, and ancient temples, captivates tourists with its vibrant historical tapestry. 
The development of the Sabarmati Riverfront and the launch of the Akshar River Cruise in Ahmedabad have further enhanced Gujarat's appeal, offering unique experiences along the scenic river. The Statue of Unity, inaugurated by Prime Minister Modi as the world's tallest statue, stands as a tribute to Sardar Vallabhai Patel's legacy. This symbol of unity and national pride draws visitors from across the globe, further enriching Gujarat's cultural significance. Yeah, Gujarat, our Bahar, it means in uh, India, the uh, tourism is developing like uh, anything. It is very, uh, uh, it's, uh, very open to uh, all world to visit our uh, uh, these tourism places. यहाँ का वातावरण मतलब बहुत अच्छा है। एक तो स्टैच्यू देखके मतलब एक मन खुश हो गया आके। और वातावरण भी बहुत अच्छा है, साफ सफाई है। Gujarat saw a 58% rise in foreign tourists in 2023, with 28.06 lakh visitors, up from 17.77 lakh in 2022, according to the Union Tourism Ministry. This places Gujarat second only to Maharashtra, which had 33 lakh foreign tourists in 2023. Under Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, the Gujarat government is passionately advancing Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision through the Kushbu Gujarat Ki 2.0 campaign. This dynamic initiative celebrates Gujarat's vibrant culture, art, and heritage, reaching out to a global audience. By promoting tourism, investment, and cultural exchange through a variety of events and exhibitions, it aims to showcase the state's unique charm and rich traditions on the world stage. If you're visiting India, take some time to explore Gujarat, a state with many hidden tourist gems. And with that, we wrap up today's episode of My India, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.